Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. Today we're going to have a look at my rack here. Uh, if you follow my other videos, you know that uh, my pedal board flows out into this rack and then uh, it's basically an, an insert loop on the pedal board. It flows into the rack, back out of the rack, back to the to the pedal board. Um, and in here, I'll, I'll put a picture of the the front of the rack up so you can see what's what what it is if you haven't seen it before. Uh, this is a, a Roland uh, delay, and then there's a Roland multi effects reverb at the bottom, and then up at the top. You can't really see it up there, but there's a, a Juice Goose uh, power supply. And we're looking at the uh, back of the ra rack right now because I'm gonna uh, obviously make some improvements on this. This is not, uh, you know, a good way to to use a rack like this and have you know have it be convenient at all <laughs> uh it, it needs to be a little bit more um ready to go which is not and you know I, I would like to point out that you know it's just two it's a four space rack with just two effects in it and you can see even that little uh, of effects in certain situations can mean a lot of cabling um so it, it's important that uh you uh, have this uh, have your rig set up in such a way that this stuff is fast to set up and fast to take down and just easy, uh, uncomplicated uh, and, and pretty simple to use. Which obviously right now this is not. Um, it was previously, but I've done a lot of changes to this, so now I just pretty much got to redo it all. Uh, right over here is most of the power cords for everything. Like that's all got to get get uh, rolled up and put in here real nice. Um, so nothing hangs out but the one uh, master power cord that goes to the Juice Goose. Uh, this is the, the snake uh, right here that's coming in from my pedal board. Uh, this has uh, the uh, signal from the pedal board, uh, the signal back out of the rack to the pedal board. Uh, it has a MIDI uh, cable right here that comes from the MIDI mouse on the pedal board. Uh, they just got a couple of control lines like this is uh this one here is delay on off um for the sde this is effect on off for the dep5 um so i've got a couple of options to to control these effects there's also you know different things here there's uh, the playmate tap tempo for the sde plus uh the hold function which can hold uh, delay, which is a cool cool thing to do, is just to freeze a delay or whatever. Um, so, yeah, the problem with uh, doing it like this, though, is obviously that uh, it's, it's a little confusing, um, especially because I changed some of the tape colors in there <laughs> that were marking things. Uh, but, bigger, but more than that um, is that you, you don't really want to be you know, plugging things in and out of uh, your rack effects every time you go to set it up because uh, these um, jacks on the uh, rack effects typically are mounted right to the PCBs in there. It really depends on the effect, but in the in most rack effects in the higher end units, they're mounted straight to the PCB, so they're not they're not actually that strong, and you definitely don't want you know, the weight of all this cabling to pull on it. So I've got, if you see right here, I've got a carabiner that hooks in here, which uh, basically uh, relieves any stress the cables put on it. But that's not really enough. Uh, it really needs um, a patch bay back here. So that way, when you're plugging this stuff in, you're plugging into a patch bay, and that's taking all the stress of the plugging and unplugging or any weight that might get pulled on it. And, uh, and it, it relieves the stress off your effects. And I'm going to build a patch bay like that today, which will be in a, a 1U rack unit. Uh, it'll look just like this. It'll go across the bottom here, get mounted in there. So I'll be able to plug all these things instead of into the, those effects units. They'll plug into, into this rack panel, which will basically take all the hit, all the stress and wear and tear uh, on this panel. And I'll just wire from this panel uh, to uh, wherever it needs to go, MIDI, signal, whatever. 
on the effects. Um, so I've already got a head start and started making up this panel. So let's go over to the workbench and take a look at that. All right, here's the rack panel with the connectors built into it. Uh, and as you can see, I did not use regular Neutrik D-style connectors. Um, I have adapted these regular quarter inch uh, tip sleeve jacks, mono jacks, to fit uh, into this uh, D-punch panel. And typically you would use these uh, Neutrik D-series jacks like this. Um, you're probably familiar with those. They're locking jacks. Uh, I don't really like locking jacks actually, so I just uh, use this setup. And this is just basically what it is: is uh, this is like a, a D D series adapter plate. It's actually made for uh, BNC connectors. Um, I've just adapted them to work with quarter inch jacks um, to get my channels here, which I've got. Uh, as you can see, I've got insert in, and they're all color coded. These uh, color code tags come from Redco. Uh, there's insert out, MIDI, the DEP5 on off, the SDE effect on off, and then the uh, hold function uh, and the uh, playmate function, which is the, basically the tap tempo for the DEP, excuse me, for the SDE. The MIDI connector, as you can see, it's also one of these adapter things. And uh, these adapters you can get at Redco along with this MIDI connector, uh, which I actually mounted it into this, um, this adapter plate. It just took a little drilling on the back to make room for, for the, uh, the MIDI connector to go through there. Uh, and then I actually epoxied it in there to hold it in there to make a nice little custom MIDI jack. Because you can't get uh, Neutrik. Neutrik does not make a, a D connector style MIDI uh, jack. They just don't make it. I mean, the closest thing they have would be an XLR. Uh, but I, I have uh, a MIDI cable coming out of my snake, so I wanted to just have a MIDI connector there. And, I, of course, I finished it off with a little uh, some some Neutrik branded uh, panels here to you know block the hole in it so it's it looks like one solid unit um, so that's basically it right there that's basically the, the interface panel uh, now what I'll do is I'll go and make the connections uh, for the signal for these and um, that's a uh, what type of wire you use uh, or cable you use to make those connections is an important choice. Uh, and I'll go ahead and actually just talk about that in the next uh, segment here. All right, as far as a cable to use on a patch panel like this, um, I actually used a, a Canary Star Quad on it. Uh, and I'll tell you why I did that in a second. Um, if you're going to use an open jack like this and you try to use guitar cable you're going to have your center conductor going one way and your shield going the other and that shield is going to be exposed so when you go to plug a, a plug in there there's a chance that uh, that exposed shield could ground out your signal uh, with this type of jack uh, if you're going to use guitar cable i'd use like a plastic jack type of thing where, where this is all enclosed so you wouldn't have that trouble um, since I'm using these these open regular quarter inch jacks uh, I used uh, Canary Star Quad and this is a it's a microphone cable uh, it's also you know used in patch panels and recording studios everywhere so it's a patch cord slash microphone Cord. There's four conductors plus a shield in it. Uh, what I did was I wired up uh, two other conductors uh, to go to uh, signal and uh, ground. And the reason I did that is, like I said, it's uh, you know to avoid this shorting out because it uh, obviously has insulation on it. So that's what I did and. 
there's only actually two signal. Uh, there's insert in and out that's actually carrying guitar signal, and by the time it gets here to this patch panel, it's been through many buffered panel uh, pedals, and it's a very robust signal. So the 18 inches of this star quad that it's going to go through is, is, is no big deal in this particular application. Uh, I've actually finished wiring up the panel here with the pigtails in it. And you can see I've got them back here. I pretty much did them uh, all eight inches, which will give me uh, long enough to connect to the, the current to set up in there, but also it's long enough that I could reach if I happen to place a shallower rack unit in there, it'll also reach that rack unit. I've got one that's a little longer because it has to kind of snake over a bit. And of course, I've got the MIDI uh, connector here, which is another reason to use uh, the Canary Star Quad, which this makes great uh, MIDI cable. And also, it's super flexible, whereas guitar cables fairly stiff. This stuff, you know, it, this panel has to be mounted in the rack and then then this pigtail has to go into the rack unit and in order to do that it's, it's got to make you know a pretty extreme s shape to get into some of them some of the inputs and you don't want a, a thick heavy stiff cable to do that with because it's going to be constantly pushing on your uh, your input and output jacks and your rack effects and maybe breaking solder joints which is defeating the whole purpose of doing doing this so Anyways, that's why I chose Star Quad. There's many other cables you could do it with, but uh, Star Quad's a good, a good choice. And uh, so yeah, it's just uh, you see it has pigtails that will come from the interface unit and go to the rack effects, and then this will be obviously screwed into the back of the rack. And then when all I have to do at the gig is uh, just uh, punch my snake leads in wherever I need them, and also I'll have to uh, put the uh, Plug in the pedal board power and the power to the amp uh, to the Juice Goose uh, power supply that's in the rack. So let me go ahead and mount this in the rack and you can uh, see what it looks like when it's in there. Okay, you arrive at, at your gig and you set your rack up and, and uh, pull the... Pull the lid off here. Revealing your brand new patch panel. You bring your your snake up here. Clip it on. I'm actually clipping it to the um, thing that holds the lid on. I'm probably actually going to put a a ring or something up here later and clip it on there. Uh, but anyways, you uh, plug in your AC power to your pedal board. Goes in the back of the g So actually bring out the power from the rack for the g goose and plug that into somewhere in the back line. Okay. And now you got your color-coded connectors from your uh, snake. You've got uh, the insert in. That's from the pedal board. You've got your insert out. That's back to the pedal board. You've got uh, some control cables here. You've got your DEP5 effect on off. You've got uh, the SDE delay effect on off. And then the MIDI control for those effects goes right in there. And uh, of course, you also plug your amplifier in there too. I, I don't have that with me right now, the plug to it. But um, there you go. It's as easy as that. That's. Uh, that's what a patch panel is for. Is it is it you know saves wear and tear on your effects units, and you just plug into this this panel, which can take plenty of abuse from you know plugging your effects. It's real organized. It's fast. I mean, you saw I was doing that slow, and it took less than a minute to do it. Uh, if you're doing it in a panic, setting up between bands or whatever, it's super easy uh, thing to do. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is these uh, connectors back here. I know you can't see it. They're kind of just uh, hanging out open to the air, uh, which is actually fine because this is in a rack and 
it's not, I mean, it's not really meant to be open all the time, uh, just during gigs, but I can put the, uh, Nordic, Nordic makes some plastic, uh, deconnector size, uh, boots, um, that are, you know, that protect the back of these things. And I can fit those on there. I just don't have any in stock right now to put on there, but I'll probably put them on there later. Uh, like I said, I'll probably, uh, come up with a ring or something up here that I can hook this into just to kind of maybe get a little better strain relief on that, but it works pretty good like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a little rack panel, uh, interface build for my guitar rack here and uh i hope you enjoyed that um hope you got some ideas maybe you can use on your own uh inter rack interfaces uh give me a thumbs up uh subscribe and uh look out for more videos from do-it-yourself musician thanks